into his presence. Amen. When I step into his presence for an eternity, amen, he, he's able and he will, if, if I will just stay faithful unto him, keep me 
under that day. Thankful for that. Amen. 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 Well, that's not what I'm preaching tonight, but uh, amen. If you would have me, if you have your Bible, start with me in Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 12. Matthew 7 and 12, and Luke 6, 31, really, you know, similar. Amen. Just different, uh, different writers. Amen. And the same thing, but amen. Just uh, felt like reading them both. Amen. I needed to read them both. Uh, uh, Matthew 7, verse number 12. It says, Therefore, uh, therefore, all things whatsoever ye do that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law of the prophets. Amen. If you if you have if you can turn to uh, Luke six thirty one. Luke six thirty one. And as ye would uh, that do uh, that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. If you would just pray with me, Lord, I thank you for bringing us here. Lord, I ask you to anoint me, Lord. To help me, God, to say what you have given me to say, God. Oh, God, to speak as your oracles tonight, God. Let none of us leave this place as when we came, God. But let us all leave this place full of your Holy Ghost, God. Oh, God, let us know tonight, God, how we are to treat each other as Christians, God. How we are to present ourselves to each other as Christians, Lord. How we are to help each other. How we are to love each other. How we are to do it. How we are to address in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Amen. As I'm preaching, amen, on unity. This is what I felt led towards. Amen. Just in the last day or so, I just kind of had uh, this thought. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to preach to you tonight on how to treat the brethren. Amen. If we're going to be in unity, we must know how to conduct ourselves with the brethren. Amen. There is a right way. I do believe I preached on the series on it. I'll probably one of these days yeah, be able to preach it again. But I do believe God is a God of order. He had everything that God does is in perfect order. And He expects us as a church to have that perfect order. To be in perfect order. In everything that we do, how we conduct ourselves should be in the order of the things of God. He manages His He to have that order and expects us to live in order. There is an order of how we are to treat one another as brethren. I want to tell you, if we are all Christians and we are and treat one another in such a way. Amen. 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 So we're going to talk about that tonight. Amen. I, do, as I told you already. Amen. I do believe we need each other to make it unto the end. Amen. And I do believe, amen, if we're, you're, uh, you know, in a church, amen, fault uh, of the things are trying conflicts and things will try to arise. But I do believe it's the order and the will of God to not let things arise like this. I believe it's the order of God to, uh, to diffuse these things before they ever turn into a problem. I do believe as Christians, we are expected to do the right thing. Amen. Amen. Even if somebody's doing something we don't necessarily like, necessarily like. Amen. Or unless somebody does something that seems to hurt your feelings. As I've told you many times, most of the time, it's probably not people necessarily trying to hurt your feelings. And most of the time, it's probably a misunderstanding. A lot of the time, there is a misunderstanding. Amen. So we must know how to treat one another. Amen. As I read to you, amen. Uh, how I read to you in Matthew 7 and 12 and Matthew Luke 6 31, it says, Therefore, all things whatsoever ye do, uh, ye would uh, that uh, whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye also uh, uh, to them. Amen. We do know that the law, the law of Moses says we're an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But uh, Jesus said, Amen. Whatsoever men do, you know, you want men to do to you, do to them. Amen. I want to tell you, if you want men to do to what's right for you, you do right to men as well. Luke six thirty one again, and, and, and as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. 
Amen. If you would, that man would treat you right. Amen. If you would, would like, flip you know, how would you like to be treated? Would you like to be treated, amen, in a right way or in a wrong way? If you want to be treated in a right way, treat others in a right way. The Bible says he that has friends must show himself friendly. That's it. Amen. amen. If we truly want friends, amen, we must show yourself friendly. Amen. There was a time where I was bashful and didn't like to talk to people. And I thought, I told myself, nobody wants to talk to me. You know what it was? It wasn't that nobody wanted to talk to me. It's that I was the, I was too nervous to talk to them. Amen. Till until I got to the place where I went to talk to people. Amen. Most of the time they probably didn't want to just go and share a conversation with me either. But I learned if I want friends, I must be friendly and I must talk to people. I'm going to tell you, if we want friends, we must be friendly. It's true. He made you say, hey, you, may, you may think these people don't want to talk to me. Amen. Maybe they're, they're just as nervous and just as bashful as you are. Amen. That's how it can apply in every single way. Amen. If you want friends, you show yourself friends. If you want to be treated right, amen, you treat people right. Now, I'm going to tell you, amen, yeah, amen, I don't believe you treat people bad gives anybody a reason that try for them to treat you bad. But I'm going to tell you, you shouldn't treat anybody bad. And we do know that we rebuke sin out on the streets. We rebuke sin. Amen. Uh, we rebuke sin as we witness the people. That is not treat people bad. Actually, that's wanting the highest good for mankind to rebuke their sins and tell them Jesus Christ can save you from sin if you repent and turn from your sins. That's the greatest good you can ever give anybody. The chance to repent. Amen. But we should treat one another. Amen. We should treat the sinner good. Amen. There's a lot of talk about how we are to treat the sinner. But amen. We should also talk about how we are to treat each other as Christians. Amen. We should and must conduct ourselves in a Christian way. Amen. They always think about it. How would I want to be treated? If somebody talks to you ugly. Amen. Well, how do I want to be treated? Should I talk back to them ugly? Does two wrongs make a right? Absolutely not. I don't believe ever two wrongs make a right. Amen. If so, I want to be treated good, I must treat others good. Amen. First of all, amen, we've already went over some of this, amen, briefly, just very briefly on some of this, amen, but I'm going to go to it in greater detail. We must love the brethren. Amen. I do believe it's not only, it's not only a good thing to love the brethren, but it's a commandment according to the Scriptures. Amen. John 15 to 12 says this is our commandment that we love one another. It is a commandment that we love one another. We have not a choice. I do believe we're to love all, but I'm going to tell you, as a church, we should love one another. We should show love unto each other. If we can't show love to each other, we will never be able to show love unto God. As 1 John 4 and 11 and 12 says, Amen. 4 and 11 and 12 says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we are also to love one another. No man, ha uh, man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, uh, one another. God dwelleth in us, and His uh, in, in, in is perfected unto us. Amen. And I've lost my spot, but Amen. There is somewhere in there. Amen. I know I can't find exactly where it is. I thought I had it in there, but it says, if, Amen. How can we say love uh, that we love God who we have seen, uh, have not seen? Amen. If we love our brother, don't love our brother who we have seen. So therefore, no man can truly love God if they don't love their brother. If you have a problem loving each other, showing love and uh, compassion to each other, you don't have, you have a hard time loving a holy God. Amen. Amen. A holy God demands that we be holy as well. Amen. We do know God is love. Amen. Now I want to tell you, He is love. Amen. Love God defines what love truly is. Amen. And if He defines what love truly is, He expects us as His children to be holy as He is holy. He has a holy love for us. And we must have a holy love for each other. Amen. Amen. Us as Christians must have a holy love 
for each other. I want to tell you, if for each and every one of these people in the church, amen, amen, unto the person that's been here the longest, unto the Greenwoods, amen, that's been here for a short time, I love each and every one of you with all my heart. I would do anything not for my brother. I go on the best for my brother. I want him to love God and make it unto the end and be in heaven with me for eternity. Amen. And that must be our mentality that we love each one, each one, every one of you. Us. Amen. Us as brethren. Amen. I love everybody in other churches. I want to tell you what sweet fellowship we have with Brother Victor Persinger in his church. Brother Brent Williams in his church. In other churches. Amen. I want to tell you, I dearly love the people of I would dearly love Victor Persinger. What a great man that he is. But I want to tell you, I must not only love him. Amen. Which of which Amen Boy, such a godly man. I must love the people in this church. We are called all called to this church. I do believe just as well as God called me to be a pastor of this church, He called each and every one of you to be on the pews of this church. Yea, man, I do believe it is God ordained that each and every one of us are right here in this church today. But me as a pastor and my wife that followed me as the husband and the head of the home is to you as well. Amen. Amen. And you say, well, I say, well, I didn't feel God in that. Well, amen. Your husband said, that, uh, said that's the way it's going to go. He's the head of the home. Amen. You are to follow him. Amen. Absolutely. You belong in this church. Amen. If we belong here, us as a body of believers, us as a local body of believers, we must love one another. Amen. As I told you this morning, sure, there's churches all around this world. There's people that love Jesus and I love that are part of this body of Christ. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, amen, us as a church must love one another. Amen. Even if somebody gets on your nerves, you must love them anyways. Amen. Even if somebody, amen, is aggravating to you. Even if somebody, amen, offends you, you should love them. Amen. And you should forgive them. That's the next thing. We must know what it takes to forgive the brethren. Amen. Matthew 6, 14. I kind of went over this in my first message, but wait, man. Amen. I, 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 as I said, I'm going to touch on it in greater detail. Amen. Of how we are to treat the brethren. Amen. We should treat them with forgiveness. Amen. As I read to you in my text scripture. Amen. I'll get to Matthew 6, 14 here in a minute. But Matthew 6, 31. Amen. Where I read to you that we should do unto others. Amen. And we, if we want. Amen. We should do unto others. It's also we all we want to be done to. If we want to be done to, do it to others as you would have them doing to you. Amen. I'm going to tell you, if you would have somebody to forgive you, you must be forgiven as well. Forgive as well. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you as well. Amen. What forgiveness Christ done when He hung upon the cross? I'm going to tell you, it wasn't just the Roman soldiers that hung him on the cross. It wasn't just the Roman soldiers. And he said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. He was talking about me. He was talking about you. When we when he hung upon the cross, he died for mine in your sins. First John 2 says he's the propitiation for our sins. Not ours only, but the sins of the whole world. Amen. Christ, amen, hung and forgave. Hung on the cross and forgave mine and your sins. If He did that for us, shouldn't we do that for each other? Amen. What forgiveness that was. Amen. When He hung up on the cross for us. Amen. Amen. We must be forgiven just as well. As Stephen was stoned, Amen. He said, Father, lay not this sin to their charge. Amen. What a what forgiveness that was. Amen. And we can't go sometimes. We get aggravated and can't be forgive, and we can't forgive over petty words. I want to tell you, because they, they, they was grabbing big stones. It wasn't little pebbles. It was big stones and throwing them at Stephen and breaking every bone in his body until he died. He had eternally bled to death. Amen. What a gruesome thing that was. Amen. But what Steve, amen, Stephen still said, forgive them, Father. And oh, forgive them. Amen. For the, amen. Forgive them. He are way not to sin to their charge. Amen. He knew that God, if they don't repent, that sin's going to be laid to their charge. 
But he's just telling them, show forgiveness unto them, God. Amen. I'm going to tell you what example Jesus was and Stephen was. What example. Amen. Amen. And we must follow that example. We must forgive the brethren. Not let, not let bitterness arise. Not let anger arise. We talk about it in Sunday school. What a wonderful, wonderful Sunday school lesson it was this morning. Amen. As I, he was teaching on this, I was just meditating on it over and over and over it's because I intended on preaching this tonight and I'm going to tell you we must be willing to forgive if we want to be forgiven we must be willing not to let the sun go down on our wrath Amen. Amen. brother Chris talked about it a little bit but I'm going to tell you me and my wife have something Amen. that if we argue we don't go to bed we don't go to sleep anchor Amen. I'm going to tell you sometimes she has wanted to, wanted to turn over. I told her, no, you're not going to sleep until we fix this thing. Amen. Why? Because I don't want the sun to go down on my wrath. What if I don't make it until the morning and I go to a devil's hell because I was unforgiven? Amen. I must forgive. Amen. I must, amen, work it out with my wife and I must work it out with God. Amen. But I don't want forg unforgiveness to ever abide. I don't want, I don't want, uh, I don't want grief to ever come, come and, uh, and abide in my life. I want to be forgiven.